Hello everyone, myself Krishna Prasad S, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, MIT Mysore. So, welcome to the theory section of Foundry Forging Lab. So, in the Foundry Forging Lab, so very much important thing it is called testing of sand specimen. So, here before going to the what exactly the testing of sand specimen, first we need to know what is mean by the molding sand. Here, molding sand means base sand plus binder plus additives. So, in generally, what is mean by the base sand? So, base sand it is nothing but it is a green sand, the sand which contains high moisture content it is called it as the green sand. Then what is mean by the binder? So, binder it is nothing but it is a clay binder or a water. So, in order to hold the sand particles together we need to add the binder. So, next one it is called additive. So, what is mean by the additive? So, additives are added to in order to improve the properties of the molding sand or enhance the existing properties of the molding sand. So, in order to achieve the good molding sand, the base sand binder additives are very much necessary. So, first of all, why we need to maintain the proper properties in the molding sand? So, we know that the molding sand it is mainly used to prepare the sand casting model. So, first of all, what is mean by the casting? Casting is a process of melting the metal and pouring it to the mold cavity and then allow to cool and solidify to get the finished product. So, in case of the casting process, here the molten metal is heated to very high temperature, then it is pouring it to the mold cavity. But the mold cavity, it is prepared with the help of the sand casting process. Okay, so that means how molding sand is made up of? The molding sand is made up of base sand binder and additives. So, the base sand, it is mainly made up of the green sand. So, green sand, it is nothing but a sand which contains the high moisture content. Whenever we pour in the molten metal into the mold cavity of green sand, so because of the moisture content, the gases will liberate it. These these gases will go into entrapped into the sand mold cavity. So, this will go into the defects in the casting. So, because of that, we need to check what are the different properties of the molding sand. So, some of the different properties like permeability, refractoriness, compression strength, shear strength, these are all the very much important. So, first of all, under that, why we need to know about the shear test or shear strength of the molding sand? Very simple, whenever the molten metal is pouring into the mold cavity, the complete sand particles are undergo metallographic pressure. So, because of the metallographic pressure, so the sand should have to retain its strength. So, in order to retain its strength, so we need to know what are the, uh, what are the strength of the molding sand. So, because of that, we are conducting the shear test for the particular sand specimen. So, how to prepare the sand specimen? So, sand specimen can be prepared with the help of the operators like sand drama as well as the universal testing machine. So, that means first of all we need to obtain the proper proportion of the molding sand. The proper proportion of the molding sand it contains the particular amount of the clay, particular amount of the silica sand and particular amount of the water in order to prepare the sand specimen. The sand specimen it is in the form of circular shape and it should be having the diameter of 50 and the height of 50. So, you need to prepare the sand specimen with a diameter of 50 and height of 50 millimeter. Then carefully you transfer the specimen into the universal testing machine. Then you apply the shear force to check what is the shear strength of the molding sand with the help of the dial indicator. Okay. So, what is the procedure to conduct the shear test? Very simple. First, we need to measure the accurate amount of silica sand and a binder then appropriate proportion of water is going to mix and first prepare the sand with the help of the bowl. Then after the preparation of this 150 grams of molding sand, then it is transferred into the flask. Okay. Then apply the ramming pressure with the help of the sand drama. Then prepare the sand specimen of 50 diameter. Then carefully transfer that specimen and then taking it to the universal tensile testing machine. So the specimen need to need to keep in the space between the pressure pads of the universal tensile testing machine. Once you place the specimen in the between the pressure pads of the shear uh, uh, shear testing machine, then place the dial indicator and set it to zero or set it to particular value and note it as a zero reading. Very important in case of the universal testing machine, it is called here we need to 
multiply with the 100 gram per centimeter square in order to get the accurate value because here in case of the dial indicator there is a two readings the one it is called shear scale and the one it is called compression scale in the compression scale each division having the 0.2 and this 0.2 it has to multiply with the 100 in order to get the shear strength in terms of gram per centimeter square so this is regarding to the setting of the dial indicator after that apply the shear force with the help of the hand wheel until and unless specimen is going to break so after that note down the reading in the dial indicator so and write it in the shear strength according to the percentage of clay and a binder so this is the procedure of the conduction of the shear strength of the specimen so later write the graph for the different proportions of the clay binder as well as the water and note down whether shear strength of the molding sand is whether increases or decreases by varying the percentage of moisture content and by varying the percentage of the clay binder okay so in the beginning in the first case here varying the moisture content and constant clay are a binder that means here percentage of clay it is fixed that is 10 percent of clay it is to be taken that means for the 10 percent of clay every time you have to take 15 grams of clay binder for total 150 grams of molding sand then the percentage of moisture content here varying now that is 8 percent of water 10 percent of water and 12 percent of water for the proportion of 150 grams of molding sand so 8 percent of water means it is 12 ml 10 percent of water means then it is 15 ml 12 percent of water it is then 18 ml then conduct the experiment and note on the reading in the shear strength then similarly in the second case varying the clay are a binder and constant moisture content so here varying the percentage of clay from 10 percent 12 percent and 14 percent so 10 percent of 150 grams of molding sand it is equal to 15 grams 12 percent of the clay it is equal to 18 grams and then 14 is equal to 21 grams so that for the 15 grams of clay binder you need to take 135 grams of silica sand similarly for 18 grams of clay binder you need to take 132 grams of silica sand then here percentage of water it is fixed and note down the shear strength in the dial gauge and check shear strength of the molding sand by increasing the clay uh, clay and fixing the moisture content and draw the graph with respect to the shear strength and increase in percentage of water and another graph with respect to the shear strength and increase in the percentage of the clay content. Welcome back. Now we are moving on to the conduction of the shear strength of the molding sand. So in case of the shear strength of the molding sand, the operators are the mainly consists of the shear testing machine, dial gauge, sand rammer, silica sand, clay binder as well as water. So in this, uh, this uh, experiment, so initially we need to prepare the sand specimen of 50 height and 50 diameter the later after the preparation of the specimen we need to place the specimen in between the pressure pads of the shear test observe here so the main speciality of these pressure pads in case of the shear test the mainly after applying the compressive force through this hand wheel so initially the specimen will undergo shear fit later the specimen will undergo compressive fail so that is very much important in case of the shear test so then how to prepare the sand testing specimen so here the sand specimen it is prepared for 150 grams so for the 150 grams here i am taking 10 percent of clay so 10 percent of clay means 15 grams of clay and then 135 grams of silica sand in order to match with total 130 uh, 150 grams of molding sand then i am adding 8% of water that means 12 ml of water so 12 ml of water i need to add to the 150 grams of molding sand to prepare the sand testing sand specimen after that take the sand specimen into this sand rammer and apply the ramming force in order to create the sand specimen later take the sand specimen and place in the pressure pads place in between the pressure pads and apply the compressive force then need to check what will be the dial gauge reading from the this dial gauge 
okay so here there is a two scales are available the one it is called outer scale another one it is called inner scale so inner scale it is regarding with the shear strength so here initially i set the dial gauge for 36 and each division it is having the 0.2 okay so 0.2 into 100 in order to get the shear strength of the sand specimen in terms of gram per centimeter square so this is regarding to the explanation for operators of the shear testing the molding now initially so empty bowl i kept in the weighing machine and it is showing the zero reading so first I am taking 15 grams of clay binder observe here now I have exactly taken 15 grams of clay binder now in order to match 150 grams of molding sand now I am taking 135 grams of silica sand Now, both mixer of silica sand and the clay binder includes 150 grams of molding sand. So, I need to mix it properly first. Both the clay binder as well as the silica sand. Now I am taking 12 ml of water, observe here, the 12 ml of water I need to take. Now I have taken 12 ml of water, I am pouring into the mixture of molding sand and silica sand. So now I need to mix it properly to prepare the molding sand of silica sand, clay binder and water. Now, this total 150 grams of molding sand, I carefully want to transfer from this bowl into this flask in order to take it for the sand drama. Now I have transferred total 150 grams of molding sand into this flask. Now I am taking it to the sand drummer for the creation of the specimen. Now I applied 3 times of hammering force in order to create the specimen of 50 diameter. So now lift this specimen. Let this leave. Take any specimen out from this flask.
okay now the sand specimen is prepared with a diameter of 50 and height of 50 now i'm carefully transfer the specimen from this position to the in between the pressure pads of the shear testing machine now i have trans transferred the specimen from sand rammer to the pressure pads of the shear testing machine and now initially setting the dial gauge reading up at the shear scale it is to the 36 now i am carefully applying the we are applying the compressive force with the help of the anvil so due to the application of compressive force first specimen will undergo compression the later will undergo shear fit so now applying the compressive force with the help of the anvil observe now the specimen is now undergo compression and now it is undergoing shear so now note down the dial gauge reading in the shear scale so initially i set it for 36 it is shifted from 36 to 40 that means 0 0.4 so 0 0.4 into 100 in order to get the shear strength in terms of gram per centimeter square so shear strength of the the given molding sand of 135 grams of silica sand and 15 grams of clay binder plus 12 ml of powder it is 40 gram per centimeter square welcome back now we are moving on to the second trial of shear test so in the shear uh, in the second trial so we need to take the same amount of 15% uh, of clay binder and 135 grams of silica sand but here the percentage of water it is increasing from 8% to the 10% so 8% of water uh, it is 12 ml but 10% of water means it is 15 ml so i need to check what will be the shear strength if the percentage of water it is increasing from 8% to the 10% but the shear strength it is increasing or decreasing it is noted down with the help of the dial gauge so i am again initially setting the dial gauge reading to the in the shear scale for 36 and then i am noted on the reading after the application of compressive force with the help of the hand wheel first the specimen is always undergo shear fail then it will undergo compressive fail so that is the main thing regarding to the shear test okay so now we are moving on to the preparation of the sand silica sand now i have taken 15 grams of clay binder now i am adding 135 grams of silica sand So now I have taken total 150 grams of molding sand. Now I am adding 15 ml of water that is 10% of water. I am mixing for 150 grams of total clay binder and the silica sand. Now I have prepared the total 150 grams of molding sand. It contains 15% of clay and 135 grams of silica sand and again 15 ml of water and it is carefully mixed and the sand is ready now. Now it has to be transferred from this bowl to the class in order to take it to the sand rammer for the preparation of the specimen of height 50 millimeter and the diameter 50 millimeter.
Now have transferred all 150 grams of molding sand from this flask. Then have taken it to the sand rubber. So again, repeat the process. First, lift this lid. Then apply the ramming force with the help of the sand rubber three times. Now, taken the flask out. Before that, just lift this lid. Now, taken this flask out and taken the specimen out. Okay, now we need to transfer the specimen from this flask into the pressure pads of the shear testing machine. Now we transfer the specimen from the flask into the pressure pads of the shear testing machine and I am initially touching, uh, setting the dial gauge reading to the 36 and now I am applying the compressive force with the help of the hand wheel. So because of the shear pads, now initially the specimen undergo failure first shear, uh, shear failure is going to occur, the later the compression is will going to occur. So that is the main thing we need to observe in case of the shear test. Okay, so now I am applying the force through this turning the hand wheel. Observe now, the specimen now undergo shear. If you keep on applying the force, now the specimen will also undergo compression. So now the specimen is completely failed, then note down the final dial gauge reading in the shear scale. So in the shear scale, now the black reading of the shear scale, it shows in between 38 to 40. So that means I can take 39, so that means 0 0.3. So 0 0.3 into 100, that will show 30 gram per centimeter square is the shear strength of the molding sand of having the silica sand of 135 grams, 15 grams of clay binder and 15 percent of water. So now I can say that by increasing the percentage of water here the shear, shear strength of the given molding sand is going to decrease. Welcome back. Just now we conducted the shear stress experiment in the universal tensile testing machine. Now I am just noted on the reading and substituting in the tabular column and checking the what is the shear strength for varying the percentage of moisture content and constant clay binder of total weight of the sand 150 gram. Similarly, in the second case I all, uh, and also did varying the percentage of clay array binder and constant uh, moisture content of 8 percent and I just substituted the value and calculated the shear strength and now I am discussing what exactly the shear strength so with respect to the increasing water and increasing the percentage of clay. Okay, so observe here in the tabular column 1 that is case 1 varying the moisture content and constant clay array binder. So total weight of the sand it is 150 gram. So here I taken 10 percent of clay that means 15 percent of sorry 15 grams of clay and 135 grams of silica sand for the percentage of water 8 that is 12 ml of water I got the shear, uh, shear strength through the dial indicator it is 0 0.4 into 100 that means here each division having the 0 0.2 with the 100 we need to multiply with the dial gauge reading so 40 gram per centimeter square we got through this first value so in the second value again we are maintain the constant percentage of clay that is 10 percent 15 grams of uh, clay and 135 grams of silica sand and percentage of water it is increased to 10 percent that is 15 ml and here observe the shear stress shear strength is decreases from 40 to 30 because as a percentage of water increases shear strength is going to decreases similarly we are maintaining the 10 percent of clay that is 15 grams of clay and 135 grams of silica sand and increases 12 percent of ml 12 percent of water now 18 grams of water 18 ml of water is added hence shear strength now decreases through uh, through the increase of moisture content to 20 gram per centimeter square so this indicates as increasing the percentage of water the shear strength of the molding sand is decreases gradually so this is the main thing we need to observe as the percentage of moisture content is increases the shear strength is going to decreases so that is the very important thing in case of the shear strength so similarly second case varying the clay array binder and a constant 
moisture content. So as the percentage of clay increases, what happens? That is very much important. So here we have taken 10% of clay, that means 15 grams of clay and 135 grams of silica sand plus 8% of water, that means 12 ml of water, then shear strength we obtained in the dial indicator, it is 40 gram per centimeter square. Then if you are increasing the percentage of clay from 10% to 12%, then 18 grams of clay we are taken, then 132 grams of silica sand and we are maintaining the constant moisture content, then your shear strength is increases from 40 to 50 gram per centimeter square. Similarly, for 14% of clay, and 8% of water, we got 60 gram per centimeter square. So from this case, we observe that as the percentage of water is kept constant and increasing the percentage of clay, the shear strength of the given molding sand is going to increase us. So that we can observe from this graph. Okay. So this is regarding to the shear strength. So, so from the shear test, we know that if the percentage of water is increases, shear strength is going to decreases. Similarly, if the percentage of clay is increases, then shear strength is also going to increases. So that means, what is the practical approach or we need to conduct for the shear test? We all know that. So even the automobile or aircraft components, they are all made up of the, with the help of the sand casting product. So if the sand casting products are made by the sand molding process, then the strength of the sand mold, it is very much important. If the sand mold is does not having the very sufficient strength, then the components whatever prepared from the sand molding it will going to fail gradually during its operation that's why we need to maintain the shear strength of the molding sand thank you